you know, Scarborough, Ontario, born and raised, like, True. East Side kid, like, bro, like, my mom, you know, preached to us. We got to go out and get it regardless of what yeah. it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody's going to give anything to you. You know, it's always, like, earn not giving. You know what I'm saying? So, especially being a man with color, like, you got to work twice as hard, you know? So, winning that title was, like, so, like, so much emotions. It was, like, everything. You know what I mean? It was, it was like, the world to me. <laughs> Did most, you get, most of the were you those guys playing in the cafeteria like uh, hell yeah in, in high school yeah, yeah. I, I, I would skip class being out there playing you know? oh yeah like a lot of lot of lot of homies in my school were skipping class playing in the cafeteria you know? yeah so Trey season 10 winner jeez, jeez, jeez. top chef Canada hey, hey. Hey. Yes, sir. First, That's first, first, That's first ever black man, first ever person of color to win Top Chef Canada. It's not crazy. Yeah. So how how, how you feeling? Like, how, like super crazy. Yeah. Like how how you feeling from that win? Honestly, I'm feeling blessed. You know, and and, and you know, feeling kind of it's feeling satisfying a little bit because like you know, just being doubted my whole career. You know, being black, oh. it's not easy, man, especially in this industry. So. Um, you know, it's, I'm feeling really great and, and humbled at the same time, but at the same time, I'm really happy to be that first one. So now I could kind of change the narrative a little bit and like kind of, you know, create new boundaries and new like, you know, conversations. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. are, you, are you getting recognized in public? Are people, are, are people starting to be like, oh, you're, you're a guy from uh, Top Chef. Game. Yeah, yeah. Lots of strangers, man. They're like, yo, I'm a big fan, big fan. I'm like, yo, mad Sick. love, mad love. But, you know, it's crazy. You know, I, I've never, you know, lived in the spotlight. So it's, it's kind of. A, a dream for me right now. What yeah. what prompted you to actually apply to be on the show? Uh, just like betting on myself, you know, just just believing in myself that I could actually do it, you know. So uh, it was like a lot of just mixed emotions and like, okay, should I do it? Should I not? But you know, I'm in and I'm I'm in a point in my career where I'm just like kind of, I have to do it. I have to kind of showcase what I could do at this level because, you know, I need to be seen. I, I believe I've been in the shadows for too long and 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 now is my time. So that was kind of my my motivation behind that. And you were like, I think you're the only contestant that hadn't had your own restaurant and, and was never a sous chef. Crazy, crazy, Damn. crazy. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So like this free to crazy. free on top, so on top of crazy. like- That's some the, underdog stuff. Yeah, like that. that's like- free, free to, uh, that. free to like have all those kind of barriers and still win, like that's, that's pretty crazy. cool. Crazy, yeah, like it's wow. just, you know, even to this day, it's like, I'm still trying to gain that respect. You know what I mean? It's sure. like, it's never, it's never ending. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and for me to go on that platform and, and kind of show up, you know, it's it's kind of I'm tr I'm trying to get more recognized and, and understand that I'm here to play. I, I'm here to stay kind of vibe. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Did you feel the season was stacked? Your season with the talent that oh, was on there? Oh, the season was crazy. Like so diverse. You know, you got people from West Coast, East Coast, North Coast, you know, ev all over Canada. You know, this is some of the best uh, chefs um, Canada has to offer. So it was kind of. It's kind of crazy, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Did, did you feel that, like, you know, you're, you're, like as a black black person in Canada, you're always taught, like, you know, as a black person, you got to work twice as hard. Like, did you, did you feel that, like, especially you know, black guy, young black guy with braids? Crazy. Did you, you feel? Know what I'm you know, saying like, you know, I thought I was a baller out from, there from Fleming Day, from Fleming Day Park. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, like, did you feel that, like, okay, I, I got to work twice as hard 100%. because because how I look and all that kind of stuff? As soon as I touched that set, man, I, they see my braids. They're probably like, yo, this guy from the hood. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, who is this guy? It's crazy. You know, and then I come up and show up. It's like, you know, this respect is more earned now. It's 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 like given now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this my whole career. This is the only thing I kind of know and, and what I do at my days off is I kind of create uh, dishes and have fun with it. You know, so being the underdog, I'm gonna live with that title forever because being black is 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 an understatement alone. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it is powerful statement. You know, I, I love it. I, I I never change my skin color. I never change the way I look. Sure. I love the way I look. I love the way I love the culture. I love everything about it. So, you know, I, I, I nothing could nobody could take this like passion away from me, regardless of like who they are and and what they want to believe in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so what do you so what do you do next? Like, because a lot of people who win that show, they go on and start maybe open their own restaurants. Yeah, they, yeah. Like, 
maybe they have the cookbooks and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> like, what's what's next for you? Like after that win, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to you know bring the community together. I'm trying to be like that guy who you know is inspiring to the youth now. You know, I want to be that person because for me, growing up in this industry. I never had a black chef to look up to. Mm. I never had that mentor. So for me now, it's to be that voice of the youth in the community to kind of, you know, motivate and inspire. I think a big part you of that, though, I mean? and this is just my opinion, is because of the lack of diversity on those type of channels. Yeah. Because you turn the channel on, you don't see nobody that looks like you, you don't see nobody's cooking like you, right? Yeah. Maybe one person, maybe two people that I can think of in the last Jeez. 20 years. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And even then they have to kind of change up who they are and maybe their style of cooking. You know, some people have stayed authentic and some mm -hmm. haven't. So to me, uh, you know, in terms of su a suggestion is like, focus on seeing if you can, you know, transition into being a, a TV chef. Mm -hmm. Good looking dude. You know what I mean? Braid. You, you, no, but I'm saying <laughs> you like... There's a look about you that people can relate to, like young yeah. kids, like young chefs can relate to. Yeah. They see you on this one show, they see you win. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. But to see you on a regular basis doing your style of cooking, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever your show would end up being, who cares? Like yeah, just yeah. whatever it could be. But talk to the people that you've made connections with yeah. through this journey and see if there's a way for you to yeah. like cement yourself in that lane. You know yeah. what I mean? Because that's A, it's an open lane. B, they need it. Yeah, they need it for sure and, and being in this industry like there's not a lot of people of my color that are like on this kind of platform and, yeah. and, and doing like the like the thing you know what i mean so for me to win that title and be the first it's crazy historic you know what was, what was the what was the response from your family like your mom your mom and my like... mom was crying <laughs> mom was crying you know like you know i i don't we don't come from a lot you know mm. what i mean like literally like you know scarborough ontario born and raised like True. East side kid, like, bro, like, my mom, you know, preached to us. We got to go in and get it regardless of yeah. what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody's going to give anything to you. You know, it's always, like, earn not giving. You know what I'm saying? So, especially being a man with color, like, mm -hmm. you got to work twice as hard, you know? Right. So, right. winning that title was, like, so, like, so much emotions. It was, like, everything. You know what I mean? It was, it was like, the world to me, you know? Do you so. remember a time in the show where you realized mm -hmm. that, no, they know they're taking me serious now. Like, yeah. what was that? Do you know what point of the show? That's a good question. I don't know, man. Like, I, I just think kind of riding the coast, like yeah. getting good feedback from the judges. Like, I think when I reached the Caymans, it was kind of like, okay, this guy's. Or, no, I, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to say, I think it was episode four or three when okay, we had restaurant little, wars. Yeah. Um, so, like, this uh, challenge, we had to, like, kind of be the chef of the restaurant and, like, create the team behind it so it was like okay this guy is the chef but like not really the chef because in the real world real world he's like not even the chef so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. okay this guy is this guy's playing right now this guy is winning challenges you know back to back and like you know the judges are wowed with my flavor so i think i think like the whole competition throughout the competition it was like kind of yo this guy is this guy's crazy so for some yeah. of us and even and even some of the other people who didn't may not have watched the whole season yeah how many Quick fires did you win, and how many immunities did you win? Okay, I didn't win any immunities. Oh, word? Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. But I won one elimination, uh, one quick fire, or sorry, two quick fires, and one elimination. Oh, they had oh, you on the chopping block. Two eliminations since wow. it's the finale. I'm concerned. Oh, okay, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. two and two, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fighting. Yeah, yeah, man. But just looking at the like some of the pictures and scenes, like you look so locked in. Like there's one picture that we, mm -hmm. I think we used it on our, our yeah. website or something like. That. But it was just like you looked like you looked so locked in. Like yeah. you looked so intense. Like you were like like you were about to, like you're in like a sports like you're like on the court or something yeah. or on the football field. Like you were just like well, yeah, you know. Hey, down. man, like. I never really have a, had a mentor coming into this industry. I don't have anybody to kind of lean on like that. You know, all this is kind of like me taking the initiative to learn and educate myself. You know, on my days off, you see me in the grocery store or whatever, picking ingredients, you know, playing around at home. I don't get that craft at the restaurant I'm working right now. Like right now, I'm just like there, yeah. but there's no opportunity for me there, yeah. you know. Real so sports. even after winning this, nothing changed? <laughs> at, at that restaurant. Yeah, nothing it, changed. Isn't that crazy? They didn't even put you employee of a month on the wall? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> see, see, that, that is wild. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. I got to still work? Well, well I mean, well, well, well I mean, work. <laughs> but I mean, this should have been, been a hero's welcome. I mean, I would have had top chef, at you least know, top whole, chef, blah, 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 working here. I, at least. Wow. That's, 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 that's what I'm saying. That just means you got to open your own spot. That just means you got to open your own spot. 
So that's that's what it is. It's like even winning this title as a black man, yeah. I still gotta work even more harder now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like this is it. It's cool. Whatever I won, but now the job ain't finished. Like Kobe said. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I think it's your turn, by the way. Oh shit, my bad. Fuck. It's okay. <laughs> you're, 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 dropping, you're dropping gems, so it's, it's okay. Yo, it's dropping good, good gold. combo, man. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's that's just how it's been for me. And but, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. The thing about you know cooking, it's about being different, right? You you don't want to be the same, same. You know, everything's too copy and paste out here. It's you again, eh? Oh shit, that means yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm holding up. Yeah. What's the hold up? I mean, you know, you're nervous now. <laughs> I'm coming up. My bad. <laughs> That's good. So, so Mastermind, a question I, I always want to ask you, yeah. well, well, especially this year, because like this year has been, when it comes to the, the history of Toronto hip hop, I feel like this year there's been so much like celebration of the history of Toronto hip hop. Like you had the All Canadian North Stars event. Like, well, first of all, what was your thoughts about that event? Because I, I feel like people are still like, I was, I was in the Dominican last week, and people were still like, it was a group of us, and people were like, Yo, I'm still, I'm still upset. I wasn't at the All Canadian North oh. Stars. Like, they, they couldn't, they couldn't, they, they, they never bought tickets. Right. And when they saw my stories, they're like, Yo, I'm so angry. Like, people are still upset that they weren't there. It was a big moment. Like, what were your thoughts of that that moment? So here's the thing: shows like that have happened over the last 15, 20 years, right? Because in this country. You had, up until probably the last eight to ten years, we only had one artist at a time that, that became a star, right? You can go back all the way to like Maestro or Dream Warriors even or Mishy, right? So it's like you had Sha Claire. When Sha Claire was done, then you had, you know, Chaos. When Chaos was done, then you had Cardi. When Cardi started, it was Drake. It wasn't until Drake, The Weeknd, Tory, yeah. that all of a sudden it was like there's multiple guys. And then, and that's one tier. And then you come down the next tier and then you have, you know, Pressa and Nav and Anders and, you know, oh, other artists, right? So that's never happened before. And also one thing I have, I've never seen living here my whole life is the appreciation for these artists who aren't necessarily household names anymore. So I would probably say it was like 2015, 2016, and I started going to concerts and they started running, and this was new too, they started running local artists in the club, like their songs. Mm -hmm. We would never do that. We, there was just this, this weird thing about Toronto where, it, you know, being a screw face capital, you just never celebrated our own artists, right? And they were singing the songs. And they would do a longer set. Like, I was like, yo, these guys are running like 20, 30 minute sets of Toronto dudes. And the art and the, the, the audience is singing the tunes. So that was a new thing for me. And when that happened, it was like, okay, the switch went off. And I'm like, there's something, there's something changing in the city. And so, but to go back to it, you know, stuff where, you know, artists from this city performing usually happened a lot. Like, you know, when Flo was around, they would have to... They would do summer jam shows with, you know, concerts. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, they would have to be, you know, driven by Canadian artists. And there's only so many artists you can pull from that are going to either put people in the seats or build out your show around. So seeing a show with, you know, Cardi, Chaclair, um, Maestro, Michi is not necessarily unheard of. And, and starting from scratch, I actually did a show very similar to that earlier in the year. He did something at Phoenix with Michi. I don't think Cardi was on it, but... Meister was on it, um, you know, so he did something like that. And I think that's where Drake got the inspiration for. The thing about Drake's is he finally did it and put it on a much bigger, you know, scale and, 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 and more eyes are on it now all of a sudden. And so in my opinion, it was well long overdue, right? To me, Drake has become such a global superstar that no one's really touching him. Like, there's nobody in this city that he should ever fear in terms of going to take his spot. So to, to wait so long to start bringing up or showing love to the people who paved the way, that should have happened like 10 years ago, in my opinion. But better late than never is what, the way I look at it. And I think it was one of the most incredible nights that we've ever seen because you literally have the biggest guy on the planet finally showing love to the people who laid the foundation for him to be right and i'm not taking anything away from drake in terms of how he achieved what he yeah. achieved i mean that's he's one of one mm -hmm. but there had to be a road for him to walk and crawl and run on right mm -hmm. and so 
I'm really, really happy and grateful to the OVO team that they decided to do it the way they did it. The fact that, you know, he didn't just, this is the, this is, this part was really important to me. He didn't just put the show on and then kind of stay up on the balcony and just watch. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. came down, yeah. was on the stage, wasn't one of those. Yeah. I've been to places with him before mm -hmm. and he'll be standing there and then he's got his security all around him and you can't interact. And these are people that he's, he came up with. Yeah. And so I always found that weird, Ooh. right? And this night, that was gone. Yeah. It was like everybody was around him. He felt, you know, it felt like he was part of the scene again yeah. and not, ab and he is above the scene, yeah. but it felt like yeah. for that one day, that one moment in time, it wasn't that. And to me, that was really special and really important. I, I give him crazy amount of props for that because it showed genuine or not, whatever. He looked like he was having a blast. Yeah. He looked like he was loving every part of that show yeah. and celebrating with everybody else. Yeah. And it, also was important for him to be seen there because because he generates so many clicks and views and eyes and you know paparazzi type stuff all the IG posts and all the blog posts that came you know the days after that it, it was it, it was just very very important especially for a city like Toronto it's like yeah. yeah you know Drake's from here you know the weekends from here but there was and when you talk to American guys, like for the most part, all they know is Cardinal before that because he was the literally the artist to yeah. achieve any kind of superstar success outside of this country yeah. before Drake. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like having a top five record on well, Snow, Snow, War, Snow had a day. <laughs> very different, very different times, right? And yeah, very yeah. different thing. But we've always had the art. Like Dream Wars were massive in the UK. UK yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's not like we haven't had that. But this is different, yeah, and yeah, I think yeah, it was yeah. very different. And the fact that people are upset that they missed it is yeah. dope. Because again, there's been parties like that before. Yeah, they never yeah, yeah. said, "Oh shit, I missed those ones." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one, there was something about it, and the fact that you know the guys from the West Coast, like Rascals, were there. Yes. It was a well-rounded. It was it was beautiful, man. It was yeah, really yeah. really nice. And for somebody who's been here almost from day one, to see that finally happen, it was it was yeah, it was. Big of your chest type thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I I feel like it. I mean, when it comes to the whole OVO Fest weekend, I feel like that's that got the most. I mean, at least from my, I feel like got the most like buzz. I feel like out of anything, like and you had and you had the Young Money reunion that happened like I mean probably a week after because I think it got postponed. But I still feel like. But I, I think it's because it was something different. Yeah. And he had never done, and it was intimate, right? Because yes. you did it at a place like when you do something at Bud Stage, it's a concert. There's yeah. sixteen thousand people. There's the stage. There's no real connection. Like, this was history. It holds whatever it holds, like, you know, 1,800 people or 2,000 or whatever the capacity is. But it was people right up against the stage. And, you know what I mean? It was, like, right there in your face. And the stage was packed at times. It just, there was, a, there was something yeah, yeah, about it, was, it, it was that different. was different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, I remember, like, Socrates had his son up on the stage. He was kind of going across the stage yeah, with his son. Yeah, man. Like, and, 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 and it did stand out to me, the fact that Drake was just up there. He was standing with the DJ, just yeah. no security. And he just looked at home, and I was just like, yeah. and that's that's a big part yeah, of it, I was just right? Like, wow, like he just he just looked like he was just like, yo, it's a family, it's a family gathering. We're playing some reunion. we're playing some yeah. records, yeah. and, and he just, did you know, like he brought Nelly out, like that was that, that was bonkers, crazy. guys. That was crazy. Like that was and the crazy. fact that they kept that yeah. secret and stuff, and like even people yeah. that were part of the show, like when they she know. when when she came out, like I was standing against a curtain, and they were bringing her through the curtain, and they kept banging. The bouncer kept pushing on the curtain, and I was standing beside Mr. Morgan, like, who the fuck is behind here, man? And he was like. There's an Ali Furtado. I was like, what? Oh, <laughs> and so that was like, it, there was just these cool things that were happening, right? And that was such a moment too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and the next thing that happened like later is just, you know, the Drop the Needle documentary. Okay. Um, which is, again, for, for me, added to the whole, okay, this year, like, there's this, like, renaissance of just history. appreciating Toronto hip-hop history. Like, what, what are your thoughts just on the, the, the documentary? Well, that documentary's been too plus years in, in the making. I mean, they, I think they may have reached out to me in the end of 2019, and then we filmed my interview at the beginning of 2020 or something like that, so give or take. I, my dates may be off. So they've been working on that for a minute, um, and it's more than just a, a celebration. Obviously, hip-hop is a big part of it, but it's more than just a celebration of hip-hop. I think it's a celebration of... Um, you know, black music and DJ culture and, and all that stuff, you know, whether it be house or or dance hall or, or hip hop or whatever. That, like, you know, Play the Record was a, a, such a massive hub for all things 
um, that surrounded our scene, you know, from the music to concerts to just DJ culture. And so, um, you know, to me, that documentary is, is, uh, it's kind of like a love letter to the city in a way. Mm -hmm. Um, and to Eugene, obviously, cause you know, him and play the record are such a institution here and so it was really cool like and you know they they had their challenges getting that done like a lot of people were telling them no 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 uh oh yeah you know at the beginning they were telling me that and when they pitched it to me they were like yeah nobody's saying you know they want to do it and i was like well tell me more about it and they did i said yes and then apparently everybody starts saying yes after that so um you know the fact that it happened i'm not going to take credit for it i'm just saying like that's what they said to me right so um yeah, it's great. And it's nice to see people like the, all the feedback they're getting. Because the thing for me is they've been showing me pieces of like edits of that movie pretty much for two years. So it's kind of like, you know, even when I saw the final cut, there was only maybe a few scenes that I was like, OK, I haven't seen that part. But for the most part, I've seen the entire movie. So, you know, the very first time I saw it, yeah, there was goosebump moments and, you know, oh my God, and, you know, ending and I teared up a little bit and blah, blah, blah. But for me, watching it in a theater with people who were watching it for the first time yeah. was very fucking cool because yeah. the reactions to certain scenes were great. Um, you know, the just the, the vibe at the theater, the, the crowd afterwards, it was like a big family reunion, people reminiscing and stuff. It was, no, it was very cool, yeah, and it's nice to see that they're you know they're running a tour and i just saw them tweet something now so apparently the doc got picked up by air canada so they're running it on yes. domestic flights and, and on air canada and stuff so more people can see it obviously yeah, i mean that doesn't mean people will but that's the right. opportunity is there right so that's dope yeah so kudos to those guys that's cool that's cool i mean i mean i mean i hope i hope that the whole appreciation of toronto hip-hop history will hope, hopefully it'll continue into, yeah. 20, into 2023 i mean you know? you know onward and upward right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. um and the other thing I want to ask you too is just about like longevity because I mean, you, your career has been so long. I mean, it's not over. I'm not, I'm not talking like it's over, but it's like <laughs> it's, but it's been so long. Like you know, you have a new opportunity uh, that you're that you have um, a new radio opportunity as well. Like what's like what do you feel is in your key to this longevity in your in your career? I don't know actually. I I, I don't know. I mean, I that. You're, still, you're still relevant. Hell yeah. To a certain degree. No, you are. No, I mean, there's, kid, there's, there's kids that don't know who I am and don't they, care, they, right? They, they, but, but that's regardless. But I think a lot of it has to do with your passion, mm -hmm. right? So if you, to me, it's always been about passion, right? I, I love what I do and there's a joy in helping other people do well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, and I also, I you know, for the most part, I want to believe that I've been very up and up with people you know I, I have integrity i think uh, i try not to be a dick or an asshole i'm sure i have been to somebody here or there but i do my best not to mm -hmm. i'd be very cognizant because i've been you know i've had people be dicks to me yeah. and i know it i know what it feels like and so you know I, I try to go out of my way and help people i try to be as genuine as possible and um and i fight for what i believe in and you know certain opportunities that have gone away have because have happened because I've been vocal against people doing or companies doing the wrong thing against the culture or the scene or the you know the music or whatever and so for me that comes first and foremost you know as as a person who's not black in black music for a very long time I I feel as a guest which is what I am you have to be as um conscious of what you're doing mm -hmm. and how you're doing it because i never wanted to ever be uh considered a culture vulture i don't think i ever have yeah. um and so that was important and is still important and i've i've told companies that i don't want to work with them if that's if you're not going to do it right if you're not going to do it with authenticity if you're not going to do it with integrity then i don't want to have my name attached to it mm -hmm. and and you know that's kind of how i move so maybe that's a part of it I don't really have the answer, man. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, you're, you know, you're doing something right. <laughs> trying. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think I may have heard a knock while he was talking. I knocked a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I didn't hear that. I just knock. want to, I, I I just want to get I that didn't camera. Want to interrupt. I didn't want to that, interrupt. That, that everything that was shy. Right, you know what I mean? Was knocking on the table. Let me just, let me just <laughs> slam <laughs> on because we haven't heard it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vote the table, man. God dang. All right. Well, it's not the end, but still. We'll see. We're about to turn it up a little bit. 
There we go. Now we now we open it up. You know what I mean? quest on the beat. Let's talk, let's talk about you for a second. What I do? Yo, 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 you're doing things right. You're doing things right. I, I, you know, I have to say, I, I feel happy when I when I hear your song on the radio. When I hear when I hear you on the radio, I'm like, I have to turn it up. I'm like, yo, I, I'm excited when I hear you on my radio. You know, very very happy, man. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, we appreciate people like Mastermind. You know what I'm saying? Putting putting on do for it, the do, Toronto artists. Put it on for the Toronto artists out here. That's a, that's a big that's a big thing right now on on, on Sirius Satellite Radio right now, with the new Toronto well the new Canadian mm. hip hop R and B station out there. Mm -hmm. um, I got Satellite in my car. Do you? No, I don't. Do you? I do not. Come on, guys. You, we gotta, we gotta I, I, yo, I gotta subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> gotta subscribe. Well, you can get it on your phone. You can get it on your yeah. phone too. But yeah, you can get it on your phone. Um, but yeah, man. Let's, let's talk about yeah, because I feel like you you know. First of all, you're you're one of the first. I have to say, you're one of the first artists that showed Shifter love. Okay. You you, you were to is, be honest. Is, is, that, is that documented? I'm no, sure I'm documenting. Is... It's documenting oh, it. Okay. I just yeah, and that's sure. why for me, it's just... like there's certain artists I have to like, I have to show love to because you showed love to us first. So you're definitely when, like when we were still in Ottawa. Yeah. You were like tapping in with us, yeah. showing us love and support. So thank you for that, man. Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. you were one of the first, man. I didn't know that. That's yeah. A, I don't know. I so. think you know just just to. Piggyback off that, I think a lot of the new artists don't understand the importance and power of networking and relationships. Mm. And because the because the tools that are available to them now are far more than were readily available to mm -hmm. generations before, they it's almost like they seem they can bypass certain steps. And I'm not saying you have to pay homage. I'm not saying yeah, you have yeah. to pay respect, kiss no rings. I'm not saying that. I'm saying for an artist's benefit to network with as many people as possible is not a hindrance. It's not a bad yeah. thing, right? And you, you're going to still achieve whatever success that's that's destined for you, but you may achieve more with relationships, yeah. right? So and, and longevity too, right? It's Because it's like... Like hip-hop has expiry dates. Every artist mm -hmm. has an expiry date. It doesn't matter who you are. At some point... You're either not going to be able to make music that connects with current times mm -hmm. or you're just not going to be, and I don't like the term relevant because I heard artists use that recently and that's not a real yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but you're not going to be relevant to a certain degree. Do you know what I mean? Like in terms of the grand scheme of things. And it just, ha it's, it's, a, it's, it's fact. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you can go through the, the name six artists that have been able to you know have decades of careers it's like there's probably only that you know jay busta nas yeah. and even ll when's the last time ll made an album right yeah, yeah, yeah. his relevancy comes from what he's doing in film and television yeah. plus rock the bells and everything he's doing there yeah. so there are other aspects of it but when we're talking strictly music artists yeah. that tends to possibly fade away right yeah, yeah definitely but you think when F, you know, say we go, yeah, yeah. say we go like, we, we fast forward to like 50, 20, 40, or 30 years from now. Mm -hmm. Drake drops an album. You're not going, you know, you don't think he's going to be like, kind of, he's going to be not relevant, right? That's what you're saying. I'm not going to say he's going to be not relevant. What I'm saying, and he, again, he is so one of one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's hard to gauge yeah, yeah. because the man dropped like this, this house album. And as much crazy. as it wasn't, it was much it wasn't my favorite or probably a bunch of people's favorite albums. Was he was in a in a stage where he's like, I'm gonna just do whatever the hell I want, and then he came back with probably the best album of the year, right? Like her loss is a dope album. So it's like it's not like he you know he stumbled and then he stumbled again and he stumbled again. And when you think about Certified Lover Boy was a dope album too. So it's like you know he put out in in the span of about a year and a bit three different albums. And his output is crazy. So I can't say yeah, yeah. that specifically about him. One of one stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I but I just based off of the history of yeah. hip hop and R and B, it's it's a tough game longevity wise, right? Because we're I feel like and we and this conversation actually came up again with the twenty one Nas thing. Mm -hmm. We're like the only culture where we start to disrespect our our legends. Yeah. Like we don't yeah. we don't have this thing where it's like, and again, 
I think it depends on the families and the way they're brought up, whatever. So my kids were all brought up on the stuff that I listened to. So with whatever they're fans of now, they at least have the foundation, right? So like my daughter can recite Illmatic back and forth. So, but it, it, it warms my heart, you know what I mean? Like when, I, when a song comes on and they know what the song is or like I remember my kid was, my son was probably like eight or nine and... Um, we were in the car and Rock Kim's My Melody came on and he was like, that's 50 Cent's favorite song. And that was because G because 50 said, you know, check out my melody it was my favorite record or whatever he said in, in, in Love It or Hate It, right? Yeah. So he put two and two together. Yeah, so it. when that exists, it's great. It's it's really cool. But not every kid, like there's like I had kids up at the radio station, new artists. This is probably again four years ago, five years ago when I was still at Flow. And they were there for to do something for Made in Toronto. I had Cardi there for something else. They didn't know who he was. <laughs> They're in the same room yeah. and they didn't know. Like, that's somebody who you... And I get it. There's some kids who only know Drake and that's it. Yeah. That's, that's their generation, right? And I get that. But how do you not have any kind of foundation yeah. knowledge for the culture that you're a part of. Yeah. Like I'm that's not saying key. I'm not that's saying you got to go to school or it's some sort of thing. required learning, yeah. Yeah. but there's got to be like even with me when I started listening to hip hop in 84 85, I liked what was then, what was new. I wasn't into, you know, the message by Grandmaster yeah. Flash yeah. and blah blah blah, but I went and I knew what who Grandmaster Kaz was. I knew yeah. who, you know, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious 5 were and I knew all these other records and stuff just because I didn't like them cool. I get that, right? Not everything is going to be for you as, as music evolves, but I still know that stuff. Yeah. And so I think there's got to be some of that to a certain degree. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? That's the thing in our in our culture with, with hip hop. I, I've never understood that. Is me again? Yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah I no, wait, no, no, no. Are you sure? No, I don't know. You, you, you might have passed again. No, I didn't pass. <laughs> no, 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 no. I got four. Don't, don't, don't. It's my turn. <laughs> it's your if you have four, right, it's my turn. Okay, okay. This one, okay, you didn't go. That's, I think that's the thing in our, in our, in our culture because I feel like, like say in sports, like basketball players, they understand, football players, they understand <coughs> the people that paved the way before. They know about their stats. They know how they play. They know their tendencies and all that. But when it comes to hip hop, if it was back in the, if it was even seven years old, Eight years old, they don't. Oh, like I don't. I don't listen to that shit. Or I, I don't know about that shit. It's yeah. like what yeah. country singers today? They know about the country yeah, singers yeah, yeah. of old. So I like to make sure that I, I go back and either study it. There's YouTube. There's so there's spot. There's Apple. Yeah. Everything is. There's like literally no excuse if you're in yeah. the industry that you're in. Yeah. To be in, in Toronto, this Toronto yeah. industry, if you know, is yeah, really yeah. industries and not whatever. Yeah. To not know who Cardi is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, that's, 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 that part I, I don't understand. that's, that's crazy. That's crazy to me. Yeah. Like literally. Is that, is my goal? Because even if you're, even if you're, I get it. If you're 18 or 19, which arguably some of these, at the time, yeah. maybe these kids were. But you want to so be, be an artist. Be, they, they were probably eight or nine when Dangerous was out. Maybe, right? I don't know the math, but sure. how do you not know that record was played everywhere? How do you not know it? You know what I mean? Like your mom must have played it yeah. in a car or whatever. So at some point it has to translate, right? So like my kids weren't around when, you know, Rick James was making music, but because of their parents, they know those there, records. There's that, right? there's that too. It's the parent, the parent, the parent thing too. Yeah. I, I, this question is bringing my mind. It just came out, came, came out, came out of nowhere. Yeah. I, I, around, going around the table, yeah. who is the greatest Toronto Raptor of all time? Raptor? Raptor? Toronto Raptor. Oh, okay. Gra that, was, Toronto... that was random. <laughs> no, greatest Toronto Raptor. What was it? What, you were checking out? Greatest oh. Toronto Raptor of all time. Ah, that's so subjective. Wait, wait, oh, I know, because what, what is greatest in this uh, context? Popularity, what they did for the Just, team. In your, in, your, in your opinion, like who, in your opinion, uh, is your greatest Raptor of all time? Who is the GOAT Raptor? See, every, I, think, I think every answer is going gonna, gonna to have... Because I got two. Yeah. I, I kind of have more than one as well but and I'll tell you one of them is Vince Carter exactly. and I'll tell you why that yeah. that answer causes um polar or right. polarization yeah. is because as much good he did for the team in the latter years when you know things weren't mm -hmm. as dope yeah. it, it put a lot of strain on the love for the team and the city and blah 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 but what he did mm -hmm. in that jersey in the dunk contest mm -hmm has done so much for the team. Like people arguably say that is still the greatest dunk 
contest ever yeah. and the Perform greatest it's, dunk it's, performance ever, yeah. right? Yeah. Performance ever, pardon yeah. me. Yeah. Then you factor in the dunk contest that happened during our All-Star year mm -hmm. and how nice. people say that was the greatest dunk contest. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and both of those have Toronto connections, yeah. right? So sure, True. in the last couple of years where, you know, Vince's back was hurting and he didn't want to play and he hated the city and there was that, that whole breakup happened. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I still have brethren today who don't like the man because of that, right? It's yeah. crazy. And it's like, you kind of got to let bygones be bygones, yeah. but but he did so much, yeah. right? It's like his 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 presence, his, yeah. his uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the, the eyeballs that he brought to this city. Bro, he, he, had, he had, it was like the Fat, Fat Joe music video where all the background dancers had like Vince Carter Raptors jerseys. I was like, what are those? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. what's love or whatever with those, whatever, those, yeah, with those yeah. videos. I'm like, yeah. bro, he had like, I said the Toronto Raptors were Kevin Durant's favorite team yeah. because of Vince Carter. All of that, right? Like, so stuff like yeah. that. Like, and all like, the Tristan Thompsons and all. The like, whole Canadian I'm, basketball. I'm saying, my, my, Absolutely. My, the whole my, Canadian basketball. My greatest Raptor of all time is Vince Carter, and I'm yeah, like, a, I'm an advocate yeah. for Vince. For Vince. Yeah. Okay. But I feel like he needs to have a jersey of the Raptors. He needs oh, to yeah. have, he needs to, he needs, yeah. to be first. He needs a statue. Like, before, well, when they do the statue, he has to be there. Bro, 100%. he has to be. Yeah. 100%. Like, the disrespect of Vince Carter it's, in it's Toronto sickening. is crazy. It's crazy. So it's not as bad as it used to be, though. No, 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 no. Yeah. And I do, I actually, I, and again, maybe I'm wrong, but I think if him and Tracy stayed together, we probably would have won a championship. No, that's 100. Yo, Kobe, said that. Kobe, said, Kobe that. said that. Kobe said that. Kobe said that. Kobe said that. So that irritates me. Yeah. Yeah. That, that irritates that. me. Both yeah. their prime would have been crazy. Kobe like, said that. That would have been crazy. Tracy said that, too. He said when he was he was watching yeah. uh, uh, Game 7, Philly, and... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, And he yeah, said yeah. if that... There's, they wouldn't have double team. They couldn't double-team Vince. If I was there with him, yeah. I should have right, been there with him. Like right. I saw him say that on a TSN yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, interview, and I'm like, hey, don't, 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 don't break my heart. Man. Yeah, right. Come on, man. <laughs> okay, so we've established number one. We got, we got so who's, so yeah, who's number me. two then? Is it Kyle? I, I say, it's, I say it's, it's Kyle. Kyle. I say it's Kyle. Well, it depends what you say. But you're not saying. Like, no. What about you the claw? Say, what about the claw? I'm not saying. No, say I'm, not I'm not saying. Like, it's, 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 either or, it's either Kyle or Demar, but Kyle, Kyle gets the edge because he won the, the championship. Edge, the, yeah. yeah. But it's not the claw, brother. Nah. Not the claw. He was a big part of it, yeah. but he didn't stay. And then, did, and then, That's and then Fred now. coming out this week with Serge saying we would have three peated if the whole team stayed together broke my heart, great. man. Yeah. And I don't know if we would have three peated. We definitely would have repeated. We would have That's the bubble. Yeah, yeah. The bubble absolutely. Yeah. 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 We, we need to do better by Vince Carter, man. It's it's so sad man. to me. It's, like no, it, at least it, it hurts me, man. Hurts. Yeah, yeah. At least retire. Like, least. did you watch that documentary? The yeah. the one that yeah, yeah, yeah. Vince Carter effect. Yeah, with yeah. Uh, with uh, Drake and, 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 LeBron. and LeBron. Yeah, there was. Like, Look yeah. what he did for the city. Look what he did for the, the, the nightclub. Well, I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, but he did. Bring, he did bring that. He did bring that. Well, I mean, he affected everything over here, man. Yeah. He started yeah. a legacy. You have. It, three. Now, now it's my oh, turn. So now it's my turn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a. That's a. Off the off the real question. Yeah, man. I'm like I I'm, I'm an advocate, man, for Vince Carter, man. Carter is sick. Oh I hate how he left, how it ended, but yeah, I still followed him in Jersey though. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, he was. And, he, and when he Jersey. went to Jersey, that first, the first two years, yeah, didn't he play well? He was, yeah, he, he was like MVP consideration. He was like top five MVP consideration that time. Like he was going crazy. Okay, who's the worst rapper of all time? <laughs> Whoa, what's that, what's we, that we might we might not even know his Bargani? name. No, 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 no. Um, uh, Rojo, whatever, something. Uh, Rafael Rojo. <laughs> some oh, center Rojo? that. Yes. Some, yeah. Yeah. Some. Yeah. Some, yeah some, yeah Rujo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the centers. Guy. They said we needed a center, so they just picked anyone they yeah. saw. It was a lottery pick too. I saw. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Crazy. It was, was the worst. Yeah. He was terrible, man. Terrible. Oh yeah. That's that's Masters goal. So, so one question I have for you, um, Oshan, is like, do, yeah. do you, one thing I've heard from people in Toronto and Canada in general that for black talent, there's almost like a ceiling that, there's like a ceiling on black talent in Canada where it's like, there comes a point where you're just kind of like, where you, it feels like you can't go any higher. Is that is that the case? Do you feel like that's the truth in, in, in Canada that like there's a ceiling for black talent that you just kind of like, you get there and then you can't, can't, you can't go any further? In this country? In this country. 1,000 That's what I was about to say, of course. Of course, there's it, no infrastructure, it, none at all. No, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta leave. Yeah, you know what I mean. You gotta leave, whether it's like physically leave or just uh, spend all your time and effort mm. promoting and pushing your music overseas. That's where um, I think the growth of a career can happen. It can't just, you can't just do it right here. It's yeah. a, it's a, it's impossible. There's not even enough. 
there's not even enough things around yeah. in terms of that's what see that's why I bigged up shifter so any any little comp whether it's a a, a blog mm. whether it's a podcast mm. any sort of media if if I see you doing something that I haven't seen before or I see there's some consistency consistency about it mm. I want to push it because I think that's the only way to create or build up the infrastructure in the music industry that we do not have so I like to do that some people don't they get a post or they get a shout out and it's like, oh, yeah, thanks. Or they move on. Or they don't even acknowledge it. They might not even repost it. Yeah. But like me, if I'm when I'm in the car yeah, yeah. and I hear my record or someone hears my record on, on, on a serious satellite radio or flow or whatever, I'm always pushing, mm -hmm. reposting, tagging, yeah. letting Massimo know what's on, letting whoever know is on. Because people need to see that there's something <clears throat> here mm -hmm. and there's something other artists can see that there's something here that yeah. you need to show back love to those people. Because besides that, you'll be stagnant here, man. There's nothing here. You can't just, what is out here? Yeah. There's right? no, there's no, um, there's no infrastructure for black music, right? Yeah. And even with the record labels, oh, they've, they've had iterations of it throughout the decades and stuff, but there's never been a real um, infrastructure because it goes beyond them, right? So it's like, sure, you sign a, a hip hop artist or an R&B artist, cool, what are you going to do with them then? because all the stations out here are pop music stations. So either you, so, you know, there's a couple of examples where somebody makes an R&B record mm -hmm. and it's real R&B and the radio, the pop stations, you know, you think about Edmonton, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, whatever, all these places outside of Toronto, they're not going to play it. Oh, it doesn't fit the format, whatever bullshit excuses they want to come with at the pop stations. So then they got to go do a dance mix of this R&B song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that now you've diluted that artist's music in order to get them played on radio. Yeah. So again, this is prior to DSPs and you know consumption worldwide. So now we're in a situation where, as Ojan was saying, the world is bigger. So you can't focus on just your city, your country. Mm -hmm. Think about where else your fan base can grow and develop because it's in those places. So even with, like, you think about New York artists, so many of them, like, they're not getting played in the U.S., like, 90s and 2000s, are, you know, hip-hop artists. Their fan bases are all in, like, Europe and stuff. Amsterdam, Italy, all those places. Like, they tour, like, De La Soul and Master Ace and all these guys, like, that's all they do. They tour in Europe and stuff, in Japan and Asia and all that. And I mean, mad, though, right? They make their living there. They're doing what they want to do. They're making money, right? So in Canada... Without infrastructure, so the other the other side of the coin of what I'm talking about, if they don't change the music from a remix standpoint or whatever, then you sign an artist who you know is authentic to their sound. Okay, great, but now we have to change that artist's music in order to get them played on the radio. So if you came in making hip hop or R and B, now we got to make this other kind of sound because we got to get it played on the pop channels. Yeah. Otherwise, there's nothing. I'm hoping now, because there has been a big influx of signing black artists in this country, that the focus isn't on getting them played in Canada, but developing them as international artists out of yeah. Canada, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So you could, be, you could be an Afrobeat artist out of Canada, mm -hmm. and the Afrobeat market is huge. Mm -hmm. So you, just because you're from here doesn't mean you can't make that music yeah. that... Yeah. There, connects yeah. with the people who yeah. are into Afrobeat outside. Yeah, sure, you're not going to get played anywhere mm -hmm. in Canada yeah. on the radio or whatever. Yeah. But again, it's bigger than this. Kind. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to think that way as an artist. Yeah, yeah. That could also make you a little bit bitter, though. Yeah. You know, like as, as, a, as a talent, because you're just like, yo. 1,000%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, even for us with, with like our, our platform, like a lot of our, a lot of our love, even like this audience, isn't even here. Yeah. It's like, it's outside. Like, we get like, yep. our U.S. audience is like, crazy and then kind of this is like you know what i've been learning through social media in the last five or six years is how big of a fan base in the u.s there was for 90s artists here and how big much music used to be because as a canadian all we think about is what we can't get here so hbo bet at the time um you know channels down there you can't get them here they're flooded with that stuff in the states so when they see something like much music come along it blows their mind because now they're getting exposed to something that they don't see on a regular basis they're they're bored and jaded with mtv yeah. we are like yo they play a half hour you know rap city 
once a day. Yeah. It fucking sucks, man. Like, you know, they got they got high 97 yeah, and we have yeah, nothing, yeah. right? So when I find people talking about like there's there's a DJ on Twitter or Instagram or something and all he does is he posts like Toronto records and shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? how the fuck did you like how do you know about this? You know what I mean? It's it's actually quite wow. um mind blowing, but at the same time rewarding to see because it, it it's like holy shit so you know what we were doing yeah made a connection with whoever you know what i mean yeah, yeah. Wow. so that's it's actually kind of cool Shoot. so you think we need more platforms like much music should come back or something like that not necessarily Show, what i'm saying what i'm saying is i think the infrastructure has just never been built and it should have been more robust at the mm -hmm. time and but what it shows is that there were people seeing things yeah, yeah, yeah. in whatever yeah. limited capacity it was right yeah, yeah. i and i think again going back to our conversation about drake doing a toronto or a northern all-star show a bunch of eyeballs were on that because of him that otherwise wouldn't have been so yeah. again when starting from scratch did it six months earlier or seven months earlier Nobody really cared. There was probably we didn't know about it though, too. But but that's yeah, that's like yeah, see, that's, yeah. so that's didn't my know, point. I didn't know about it. Right. So when Scratch promotes it, yeah. you know, six hundred people show up. Those people know about it, right? Yeah. yeah. Drake mm -hmm. says I'm doing something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty-eight million people know about it, yeah, yeah, and that's, then that's the, and that's the key, that's right? The key. So again, that's why I give him yeah. and his team so much love for that particular event yeah. because it was long overdue, and then it, again, better late than never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we need more of that. Right, like I also feel like, again, on Sound Forty Two, mm -hmm. there could be way more yeah. Toronto love on that way on that us. channel, right? Yeah. But again, they curate whatever whatever their whatever their game plan is for that yeah. channel. It is what it is, yeah. and it's still great that it's there and it exists. Um, and now we have an alternative, another option or whatever. Yeah. So I mean, that exists as well. Um, and so hopefully, you know, between the two, there can be a little bit more exposure for everybody, yeah. right? Yeah. No, definitely. But, I, but I, I do think that the world is ready for Canadian stuff, like Toronto stuff, Canadian stuff. Like I feel like, especially because what Drake's done, I feel like the world is ready. Like for whether it's media on the media side or the music side, I feel like the world is ready for like for what we do. You know, there's still people that use being Canadian as a diss, though, right? They'd be like, ah, oh, fuck them Canadians, blah blah blah, whatever. But I think that's just you know, whatever. It is what it is, right? But you're absolutely right. At the same time, like I mean. It's almost like, you know, we, we self-hated on ourselves for so long. Now that we're, we really love ourselves and we appreciate everything that's happening, we're noticing, like, again, you know, you think about the NBA and all the yeah. bullshit that the Raptors have to go through yeah. with officiating and all the other shit. Even after know, winning the ring. Right. Yeah. So you think about that, you factor that in and you're like, oh, okay, well, you know, it's, it's a real thing. There's a real hatred for, for yeah. what we're doing or whatever, right? But I, the one thing that I do appreciate is they can't stop it, right? You can hate whatever, you but you couldn't stop Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't stop The weekend. No. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. whether you like them or not, until they start sucking or whatever, or their expiry date happens, yeah. it's they're going to still keep running shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Is your, your goal? What, yo, who mixed this? For real. I chef, chef, mix. chef mix. Chef mix. Wonky? I'm, 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 I'm just, but you, I'm, you, yeah, 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 you I'm very, your, you I, I know, you know, I know, I don't know, God, God's telling me something right now, God's telling me something, but let me see, let me see, let me see if we can shake it up, let me see if we can shake it up, you like that one? Yes. Wow. Oh, I was at a good place, <laughs> second hand did, Yo, man. that's a great play. So I know what you're holding, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Question, uh, um, Oshan. Um, talk about like I want to talk about like just art, like branding yourself as an artist. I feel like you, you, you as a as an entity, as an artist, like you're so like you have the the music, you have like the 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 look, you have all. Like, talk about your journey of just developing your kind of, your your brand as an artist. Um, hold on. See, for me, this whole thing is a journey. Like I'm still in the process of it. Still, I don't think I've ever. I don't think there's a uh, a status that I'm just like okay if we get there that's that's what it is. I'm always I'm always evolving. I'm always developing. Like I do acting as well. Mm. Um, you know, we started getting more into uh, my heritage in terms of Nigerian. So we we start breaking into the Afrobeat world. You know, I do the hip hop. I do the R and B trap vibe souls. 
music. So I'm always trying to find a way to grab um, what inspires me, what influenced me from from being a child in Toronto, GTA, Brampton, of course. My parents, my dad's Nigerian, my mom's Jamaican. So I have that whole heritage of culture of music and and identity. So I'm always just grabbing, searching, looking, feeling with my brother XP. Um, and <laughs> shout out to <laughs> XP, tall nigga somewhere. Sure. But um, I'm always just trying to figure that out. Like it's it's a it's a feeling, it's a vibe. Um, you know, I go, I, I just go through phases pretty much. And as long as I'm tapped in creatively, I'm just, whatever happens, happens. It's, it's pretty much how I go. Whatever happens, happens. So, um, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what it is. That's yeah. what it is. That's good. I like, I like you know, having, having been at one, having been at one of your photo shoot or your video shoots. Oh it, yeah, you it, were, you were there. I was there. And just, and just seeing how, like, how much of the vision isn't just the videographer's vision, but it's like. You're 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 pretty much almost like directing the whole thing. I'm, I I want to be tapped in with every part of what we do. So you know I have a great team. You know what I mean. I got a great team. Keems KP like these these were, I got a lot of women on my team too, um, that really help my vision come to life. So, but I always want to be a part of it. If it's not me, I don't want to do it. I, I do I do have uh, I do give pushbacks to stuff that I'm not really not really feeling. But I always want to be tapped in visually. Photos, music, yeah, that's my goal. I'm about to do something right now. Hold on, just hold on. Watch this. What? Oh, oh wait, is that what you want? All right, hold on. Oh, you want that? All right. Hold on. <laughs> no, he was like, he was, you were liking me going over there. Oh, see, I know, I know. But like, yeah, well, yeah, like I was saying, I like to be a part of every... Yes. Are you about to win? Yeah. Uh, you just played? Yeah. Just play. Okay. Uh, oh, no. I don't, I don't. Actually, sorry. Uh, sorry. Yo, what kind of... Sorry, what, sorry. I was, I was, because I was, he does... I was the focus. He, he, yeah, I was the focus. Yeah, yeah. on a roll, man. Is that three? Three. Three, love. Oh. I mean, it is Wait, three. Y'all know he can't... Yeah, it, and, but... He can't he, win, He, he can't win. <laughs> I thought that I was about to have that one. <laughs> he can't win. I really did. I thought I was about to have that one. Yeah, so here's the thing. You have to knock him. He has to knock him or it doesn't matter what we do. No. 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 What do you mean? It, it don't, it don't matter. Like you got to knock move. him. It's your move. It, 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 if you don't knock him, we I can't win. It's side. impossible. <laughs> I know it was blocked on that side. And I was like, okay, so it's your move. It's, you got I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm begging you. Give him at least one. We're not taking love today, bro. I'm not <laughs> taking love. Imagine? I'm not taking it's love. Not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not starting this day off like this. <laughs> I'm not taking love today, bro. That's all my question. So. I don't see the, the mix it up that much, right? Yeah, you, 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 you just kind of touch it on. There we go. There you all right. Go. All right. So, so what's next for you? What do we have, um, we have going on? Well. Aside from that video, that that video that you were part of, yes. we got to drop that. Yeah. Um, Am I supposed to go? Who's, who's supposed to go? It's me, because no, you know I'm a I'm a champ right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh wait, hold up, hold up. Yeah, we got videos dropping, brother. We got um new single dropping. We're gonna start rolling out a new project next year. Is the single like is it what kind of is it like Afro beats again? Is it like R and B, hip hop? It's it's All of the above. but here's, but that's and that's that's how I'm curating my my music. Like I don't want you to just necessarily know what what type is coming out. I gotta make everybody understand that that any of that can come from everything. Oh Sean, so yeah, it might be Afrobeat, it might be it might be R and B, it might be hip hop. I gotta blend I gotta blend the promotion of them, blend the uh, rollouts of them, so that anytime I tap into anyone, it's like oh no, that's that's mm -hmm. oh not I'm going out of a going out of you know out of pocket or out of mm -hmm. out of my wheelhouse so um it's, i'm gonna keep doing more of that because we're getting love we're getting love we're getting a lot of love with in terms of the afro beats in in africa right now okay. niger ghana uh especially african, african tour eventually it, i gotta go there yeah, no yeah, like yeah. a lot of the stations that we tapping with there they're like i gotta we gotta come out there i gotta come touch the people out there mm. um so that's gonna be part of our goals next year is getting out overseas Europe, 
some collabs with like Wiz and all that. Co- co- oh, I mean, I mean, you, 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 you the speaking Vito, the Vito collab. Yeah, yeah. We, we we got you know. There's there's things Burn that up. can there's things that can happen, man. You know what I mean? As long as we keep pushing and showing the consistency, because that's what that's what I pride myself on with right now mm-hmm. is the consistency of putting out records, putting out dope records, and having the next one and having the next one. Like we're never satisfied. Like we are never ever 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 satisfied so um and i think that's one thing that if i had to give advice to artists out here is continue to be consistent keep pushing don't take so much breaks i mean like there's there's no need for breaks there's not really i mean if you want a mental break sure if you want to take time to just figure out what you're doing sure but there's no point just collecting all these records for months and months and months on end and just not putting nothing out because you're so hard on yourself a lot of artists are like very hard on themselves to be honest and they don't want to show their growth or show where they're coming from and how, where they're going to end up. I like showing that. I like showing this is where I, this is where I was right at that time. This is where I am right now. This is where I'm going later. See the whole process and hopefully you fall in love with yeah, you fall in love with where we, how we're doing it, the journey of it. And um like I'm super excited like I'm super excited for for some of the records that y'all y'all are going to hear like honestly like it's very like I'm a, I'm way ahead of the projects that are even coming out that I have to put out. Mm-hmm. Like we're like we're way ahead of that, but you know because of obligations that I have to do, those records got to come out a certain way. But I'm really excited, bro. Like it's it's gonna be another turn up season for 23 for me and my team. So the Mike uh, year, Michael Jordan year, I mean, 23. To- Jordan, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean who's the I mean who's the goal? Man, is it? You know, that's a weather conversation. <laughs> that's a weather conversation. <laughs> how about you? Like how, like anything else you have coming up? Not really. Nothing in terms of uh, just hanging, just hanging, out with, hanging out with Russell Peters <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> it's it is your go. Um, just continue to do what I'm doing now, and if any other new opportunities present themselves, I mean I'm busy enough as it is. Mm. But you know, if other opportunities present themselves. But, we'll... but you showed up for us, which is nice. I enjoy stuff like this though. Yeah. So, nah, I enjoy this stuff. Man. That's, that's yeah. good. That's good. And I don't enjoy losing, but you know, you know what I mean. You don't enjoy getting love. Don't get that love. Play. Don't get that love. How about you? How about you, Trey? What do you have uh, coming up? Um, yo, just working with like like-minded chefs like myself, you know, and just kind of pushing the envelope a little bit, you know, and, and changing like the scene, uh, the culinary scene, and, and, and starting some conversations. So, just working on pop-ups and, and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's good. I know. Yeah, man. But the end game for you is like a, a brick and mortar. Room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Open okay. up a restaurant. Okay. Start like here? a. Yeah, I'll start here just because home base. Yeah, yeah. And then, like we we're talking international, you know, it's it's different. If you, if you could open up a spot, like what, like if you could ideally open a spot anywhere in Toronto, like what, like what part of the yeah, city? Yeah. Like you're looking at Eglinton West, you're looking at downtown. Yeah, yeah. Like where do you, where would you want to be? I don't think it would be downtown, um, just because downtown's so it's so chaotic, it's chaotic sometimes. So I would say more like maybe the east side. Ish. Do you What's find that? that though, like, it, because it beca- that, at that point it becomes destination dining, right? Like you yeah. have to build up a name and be exactly. like, okay, I gotta go to that spot. Exactly. But if, if like, but it, it can be challenging for, you know, new yeah. discovery. You know what I mean? Like downtown, sometimes people just roll on something and be like, oh look, there's something yeah, there. Yeah. Let's go. But like, if the restaurant's good enough, people will make that trip. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. So. Like you have the best restaurants in New York or in and you know around the world, people are gonna literally fly to that country or city to go and, and experience that right. unique restaurant. Right? So just figuring out where where I would wanna drop it. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, bro? KB the boss. What well, what's up with you, man? I'm just I, I'm, I'm just this is what I do right here. I'm just you know I'm just facilitating discussions and all that kind of stuff and all that. <laughs>